the, the purchase of your new imaging device. So I should emphasize that to know about you know the image characteristics is you know, quite important for our the job. Okay. Um, and actually, you know that there, you know, so there would be some qualitative and you know the quantitative measurement of these, you know, the physical characteristics of you know, the imaging systems. But today, you know, that the, so let me just focus on some, you know, quantitative measures of you know these, you know, the, the physical characteristics of imaging systems. Okay, and the so those, you know, the quantitative measures that I'd like you, you know, to share with you, the include, you know, the spatial resolution and contrast and noise that as I have mentioned in this one, okay? So let's just start with, you know, spatial resolution. So, so, what do, so what do you think, you know, that, you know, affect on, affect, you know, spatial resolution of, you know, nuclear medicine imaging systems. So if we just focus on the gamma camera or the you know, spec systems, so yeah, the, the most important you know, major the component that you know, determine the spatial resolution is you know, collimate resolution, okay, right? So uh, in the previous lectures, you know, that, uh, you know, I emphasized that Collimator resolution is more dominant than the intrinsic resolution in the spec system. So the, the system resolution is mainly determined by the collimator resolution. Then what you know you know, you know what determines the you know, collimator resolution? So these two factors in you know, the whole diameter and the whole length and you know source detector distance. Is the major factors that determine polymeter resolution, right? And how about the you know, intrinsic resolution? So <clears throat> yeah, so one of main factor is you know the statistical variation in the you know, distribution of light photons among the photomultiplier tubes. So as you know that uh, we have we use in you know, a multiple photomultiplier tubes. But the gain of you know photomultiplier tubes are different, and light coupling between the photomultiplier tube and scintillation crystals also different. And scintillation crystals is itself is you know is not homogeneous. So actually you know that uh, there is some you know random statistical variation in the distribution of you know light photons you know among the photons. And some geometry factor is also important. You know that the photomultiplier tube has you know best gain, you know, on the center of you know photomultiplier tube, but the between the you know, photomultiplier tubes we lose you know a lot of you know light. Okay, so that also causes you know some variation in the, the uh, light you know collection of the variations. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, another factor is you know the gamma ray energy. Gamma ray energy. So, so in terms of you know intrinsic resolution, the which is better? The high energy is better or the low energy better? I would say high energy is better because you know the, the high energy generates more photons, more number of you know scintillation. So we do you know larger number of the scintillation photons, we can have you know, better spatial okay. uh, so in PET, so, so I think you can remember that you know that the PET detector consists of some kind of you know scintillation crystal array. I mean that array of small size crystals. So actually you know that so the element size uh, in devices with you know, a discrete element like PAD is you know, another factor that determines resolution. Okay, so let's remember you know the feature factors are involved in the determination spatial resolution. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, but there, 
they are in practical situation, the patient motion is also the, the important factor. So this is not a you know, physical factor, but maybe important some technical factor. So although you know that the, even though we have you know very good imaging systems with very fine spatial resolution, if patient to move, actually you know, that the, our the good system you know, doesn't matter. So the left one is image acquired without movement and with movement. And you can see the image resolution is much worse if a patient. So we need to well control the patient movement or we can use you know, some gated imaging and you know, the, the breath hold imaging. But unfortunately, you know that the breath holding is impossible in nuclear medicine because it takes too long. But the gating, gated imaging is very useful. Uh, then let me you know <clears throat> tell you about the method for evaluating you know, the spatial resolution. I mean, the, how we can measure the spatial resolution? Yeah. So. Yeah, easiest way would be the subjective evaluation. So if we read the image, so we know that we know whether you know it has a good special resolution or not. So it's quite easy. Uh, so for example, you know that if we scan the same brain phantoms like that, actually you know that we can subjectively determine how good the special resolution of our system. Sometimes we use some specialized phantom for special resolution measurement. I mean that sometimes we use, you know, bar phantom, bar phantom with you know several bars with you know different sequence to know about the special resolution. Uh, but the more professional way, I mean, that the more physical way, is to measure the you know the point spread function or the you know light spread function with you know point source world in line source that I will tell you about today. And another very the mathematical way is to measure you know, modulation transformation, MKF. So that is you know usual actually you, MKF is usually measured in X-ray, X-ray systems. A nuclear medicine we I think that uh, we more frequently use you know, the point spread. So yeah, actually this, I think you are familiar with the bar phantom. We use you know, this kind of phantoms. I mean that the, so this, actually you know that the, this phantom consists of you know, the, you know, the blocking materials like lead, shielding materials like lead and the plastic. Okay. So if we, uh, how to say, if we measure it, I mean that the, if we the place in a this lead sheet in a onto the some in a the flood source flood source actually you know that we can measure you know, we can have this kind of image better so yeah so you know that uh, so we can identify how many you know how thin the you know bars we can you know the visual so you can see. Okay. So this is another, you know, the bar phantom, actually the very fine bar phantom used in the X-ray CT. Okay. So if we, you know, the, the scanning, actually, you know, that the, in some point we cannot, you know, distinguish, you know, these bar phantoms. Okay. So, so using, you know, this kind of, you know, phantoms, we can, Estimating you know, what is the special resolution. Okay. So the, then let me move to you know more quantitative way. So as I told you, you know that the, in the nuclear medicine, uh, for the assessment of you know special resolution, usually we measure you know full width half measure or you know the point spread function or the you know, line spread. Uh, and full width half maximum is in you know, the FWHM. 
is you know about 1.42 times the width of you know smallest visual bubble in a buffet. Okay, so this is you know kind of look so. And if we have you know multiple you know contributing you know factors to the resolution, actually you know the the, the system resolution is you know the convolutional the sum of you know the each component. Okay, for example you know that the the system resolution of a gamma camera, you know, is determined by the you know collimator resolution and intrinsic resolution. So in the case, you know, that uh, we can calculate in a system at WHM using this equation where this is the you know, the collimator at WHM and intrinsic at WHM. Okay. Then what is exactly you know at WHM? So so let me say, you know, this is the, you know, the point spread function, while the, you know, the line spread function. Oh, I didn't told you what is in you know, a point spread. Yes, we have, you know, so we have a camera system. Okay, so we have a point source here. Point source here. So let me say this is the image of you know, the point. So this is the point source. But uh, you know, if we take the each picture using our spectral the pet systems, it looks like you know like this because of the sun blur. Okay. So if so let me say this is our image and let's you know draw a line and you know profile and uh, Actually, you know, this profile is point spread. Okay. Yes. So I would say you know, the point spread function is by profile on the point system. Okay, right? So if you have in you know, a the good imaging system in terms of you know spatial resolution, we're gonna have very in you know, a narrow point spread function. But if our system has in you know, a better the better spatial resolution, actually you know, the point spread function will be you know, much in the distance. Okay. So uh, then you know FWHM is the you know the width of the, you know, uh, the, the half of the you know, maximum value. So let me say you know, that this is the maximum value. Let me say this is one, and this is zero, and this is uh, one and you know, the half, I mean, the 0 0.5. So the, you know, the width of the you know, point spread function at the, you know, the half of the the maximum value of it. So that is the full width and half function. Okay. Yeah, in the nuclear medicine imaging, usually this full width and half maximum has in a, a millimeter order. I mean, that, uh, several millimeter or something. Then we can also de uh, define full width and you know, tenth maximum, full width and tenth maximum. Actually, you know, full with actually fully set tense marks uh, and measured at the uh, you know ten ten percent, one of ten. So this is the you know, ten percent of the you know, peak value. Then we can measure the you know, each peak. Okay, so that is in full with the you know, tense But special resolution we usually measure at fully set. Mm. Actually, you know that the, I told you the full width uh, half maximum is about you know 1.5 to 4 to you know 1.2 times the width of smallest resolver in a phantom by you know, our eye. So actually, you know that uh, so if we have you know these rectangular patterns and you know that uh, if this is the you know, Blood images, 
actually if you know if they are you know too close actually we can resolve you know these two peaks okay so yeah so yeah so you know that in the case you know the full width they have to maximum with this system so was you know 1.6 times the width of individual band in this case so I mean that uh, so we can you know, approximate you know, the result of this kind of patterns. Okay. Uh, so let me now move to the you know so what is the you know, modulation transfer function? Uh, as I told you, you know that uh, for the for evaluating you know special resolution, we can use you know. FWHM over full with the half max point, point split function, where we can also use in you know, a modulation transfer function. So let me tell you what is you know, this modulation transfer function. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, modulation transfer function usually means how we can you know the preserve in you know, a high frequency component in the input layer. You know, I mean that uh, if my imaging system has mm -hmm. good special resolution, then it means that you know, this system can reserve the high frequency component in a curve band. I mean that uh, usually you know, that, uh, to reserve low frequency component is easy. But, uh, it is very hard to deprecate in a high frequency component it is difficult if we don't have in a good imaging, good in a special resolution. Okay. So the modulation transfer means function means how where we can preserve such in a high frequency component. Okay. For example. For example, you know, the if, so let me assume that we have some audio component, you know, audio systems. And these are the, you know, input signal, maybe in a low frequency, medium frequency, and high frequency. As I told you, you know, that the, so how about this system? So, yeah, in this case, you know, that the, this system preserve quite well the medium frequency component. But uh, you know, low frequency signal and high frequency signal has much you know attenuated. Right? So yeah. So if we in a you know this in you know, a frequency response curve, actually you know that the relative output depending on the you know, frequency will have in you know, this kind of issue. Yeah, actually, you know that we use this kind of you know the functions in the audio systems, but uh, usually our imaging systems would have this kind of you know shape. I mean that uh, our imaging systems usually where reserve preserve the you know, low frequency component, but uh, it lose in you know, some in you know, a high frequency component because of the blood. So the frequency resonance curve will have that kind of issues. So yeah, so modulation transfer function, you know, you know, means you know how well we can preserve that kind of you know, I mean that the so actually this is a definition. You know the M modulation the input the modulation of input is the you know the the ratio between the you know the summa summation of you know maximum and minimum value and you know they are different okay which in this image so this is the i max i i b okay and the modulation of you know output function is the you know the ratio between you know this you know addition and the 
subject. Okay. So yeah, in the case, you know, that the, each amplitude was, you know, quite attenuated. Okay. Attenuated. So the modulation transfer function is always you know, the frequency component would be less than one. For example, in this case, it is about you know, one, uh, 0 0.5 or something. Okay, so this is a definition of you know, modulation transformation. I mean that the ratio between the modulation of output and modulation. Okay, and as I told you, you know that uh, each frequency K means you know frequency, and each frequency component would have you know different you know modulation transfer function, okay? So we can say this is a kind of a modulation transfer function, okay? And we can also, actually this is a very typical modulation transfer function for the imaging systems. I mean that the, this X axis is a special resolution. I mean that the, from low frequency to you know, high frequency. As I told you, you know, that the low frequency components are usually well preserved, but the usual we lose the high frequency. Okay. And you know that the, so actually you know this is the modulation transfer function for parallel hole collimator. And you know the, the special resolution of in you know, a parallel collimator de depends on the source in you know, a collimator distance. I mean that the, if the you know distance is too far, actually the image will be very blurred. Special resolution get very low. So in the case you know modulation transfer function here uh, go down very quickly. Mm -hmm. So this actually, you know, that if we summarize, you know, properties of you know modulation function. First, the, the systems with the higher modulation transfer function MTF MTF values will have the superior you know, spatial resolution. I mean that uh, so we can say this system has you know better spatial resolution because. It preserves in you know, a high frequency component rather than you know this system. So. And this is somewhat you know mathematical in a statement. The MTF is the you know free transform of you know, point spectrum. I mean that the, if we measure this in you know, the point spread function of your imaging system, and if we apply the Fourier transform, then we can obtain this you know, modulation. Okay. Or if you measure this modulation transfer function and apply inverse Fourier transform, then you can also obtain this. So there is such a relationship. And the MTF over system is the product of you know, MTF of each component. I mean that the, if we have we measure the you know MTF over you know, the intrinsic MTF and collimate MTF, then if you you know multiply these ones, actually we're gonna have a you know, system. And MTF is uh, MTF curves are sometimes used for you know, the comparison of you know two different systems. So actually, you know that uh, so so these are the you know MTF for two different collimators, okay? the blue and orange. Yeah. So the actually you know that the blue one. Yield in a better low frequency resolution for you know course it, but the, this orange one will in a yield in a better uh, 
images for you know why because okay? so we can use them for the so yeah if we go back to you know this slide so for measuring the you know spatial resolution i have mentioned in you know, four different ways the so objective evaluation and you know, that's uh, very simple measurement to the like path phantoms and how to measure the point spread function and full reset function. I told you here what is the you know, modulation transfer function and relationship between. Okay. So any question? Please explain a little more about it. High frequency component and low frequency. Ah. Mm. Yes. I see. Yeah, that is not difficult. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, frequency is the measure, you know, like if uh, we uh, could well understand uh, when you. Talk like when you give example of the audio audio frequency. Yes, yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, for imaging, imaging. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Okay. So please remember this. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I think it, this would be easy to remember the low frequency and high frequency, and the frequency means you know how frequently you know the signal changes. Change. Yeah. In the images, you know, if we look at the bar phantom. So this has a high frequency and this has a low frequency because you know imaging intensity is changed in slowly here, but in the case you know it changed the function. That means when the subject moves away from this receptor, it becomes high frequency. Yeah. Yeah. Let, yeah if you know, so let me see. So let's say this is the image. This has low frequency because the signal is not changing. Very slow. But the, this has a, in a high frequency because the signal is changing. So in the images, the edges, edges, boundaries, you know, the boundary between the, the background and the regions. Have in high frequency component, uh, some uniform regions has in low frequency. So low frequency and high frequency. You mentioned about two kinds of coilmeter. Mm -hmm. So this coilmeter one is high resolution. And yeah. I'm not sure which one which. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't. Yeah. yeah. I don't have you know the good example here. Yeah, but the. So, yeah, for example, you know the. the Although in you know, a low energy the collimator, so usually you know there are three different types. You know the high energy collimator, high, and, uh, high resolution collimator, all purpose collimator, and high sensitivity you know, collimator. So among you know these three you know high resolution collimator, let, let we can you know that maybe high resolution collimator. All purpose and high sensitive collimator would have in a this kind of in a empty comparison because you know that the, we can measure high frequency component better with you know high frequency of the collimator and you know high sensitive collimator usually has lower special worse special resolution except yeah. So it will have in a worse in a
in terms of any special education. And each of them has in a uh, collimator regulation. If we if we use, usually you know that the uh, we measured in a system resolution with different types of collimators. Yeah, so but if you measured in a special resolution with in a different types of you know, collimator, actually you know, that uh, they will have in a different FWH. Okay, FWH. And the high resolution collimator will have in a, a smaller value in terms of so let me now move to the contract. Okay. So yeah, so actually this is you know, the simple definition of you know, contract. Okay. So yeah, actually R zero here is the you know, background level. And RL is the, you know, the counting rate, I mean the intensity in the region, in the region. Okay. So in that case, you know that the, it has in you know, a positive <coughs> contrast. I mean that the U region has in you know, a higher intensity than the background. Okay. So yeah, in the case, you know that the contrast is the ratio between the you know, difference between region and background over uh, background, okay? So this is the simple definition, okay? Uh, actually, you know that too, so what is the effect of, you know, background in a conflict? So, yeah, for example, you know that uh, my system has accepted, you know, Lots of you know scattered photons, okay? or my past systems you know, you know received you know a lot of you know random cards. So it's so let let me say it's background level increase. And what's the you know such effect of you know background conflict? So yeah, due to, due to you know such you know the background conflict, actually you know that the, this level and you know that the, this level. Both of them were increased. Okay. Then let's calculate you know, each you know, contrast. Okay. So as I told you, you know, that the, the contrast is the ratio. Yeah, so I mean that the ratio between you know, this difference and you know, the, the, this you know, the baseline level. Okay. So yeah, in the case, you know, that the, because, you know, that RB is background level, because it's commonly in this term and this term, so they were eliminated. So the, actually, you know, this will be same as before, but, the, you know, actually, you know, this will have, you know, additional, you know, the background value here. So how much, you know, different, you know, this one, <coughs> With you know the formal one, without the background noise. So due to the you know background noise, actually you know that uh, it has in you know, a higher values here. Okay. Then you know that the contrast will decrease. Okay. Which thing? So, oh, I think I should stop. Okay. Yeah. So. Actually, so from this very, you know, simple calculation, you know, that uh, we can know, you know, this background noise, you know, make, you know, our contrast worse. Okay. So this is the effect of, you know, the background contrast. So, you know, so as I told you, you know, that the, the background count is the main source of, you know, loss of, you know, contrast. Okay. Then what is, you know, what other, you know, 
main sources of this in you know, a background account. I mean that the so what is the main source of you know this background here? Yeah, in the gamma camera, the septal penetration, septal penetration is one of them, and scattered radiation is you know another source. And you know that uh, if there is some in inadequate uh, quarterly, you know, improperly shielded radiation sources, you know, elsewhere, it can also increase in you know, a background color. And we also need to use in you know, a optimal energy window, you know, to reduce you know this background count. Okay, but uh, we should be very careful in choosing the you know, optimal energy window because you know there is you know, a trade-off between the counting efficiency and the scatter rejection. I mean that the, if we use very, very narrow energy window, it will be good for scatter resolution rejection, but the, it will cause the you know it will cause the you know reduced you know, counting efficiency. Okay. So we need you know some you know, optimal energy window. For example, you know, for the you know, sodium iodide-based you know, gamma camera systems, about 15% is you know, optimal. Okay. Uh, another way to you know, improve contrast is obtain the tomographic data. Okay. So, for example, you, know, that the, so you, you already know. So this, Actually, this is a simulation image of you know, plana imaging, plana scintigraphy, and this is you know, spec image. So, uh, because you know that uh, if we acquire spec images, actually we can deduce the you know, background. Okay. So this will be the best way to improve it. Uh, so there is some you know mathematical technique to improve the you know the contrast. For example, you know, this kind of you know, histogram equalization is a you know, method that we can use for the contrast in X part. I mean that, uh, so, so actually, you, so you, you can say this image has you know, quite bad you know, contrast. Yeah, because you know, that, uh, in the histogram space, all the, you know, the pixel values are concentrated in the very little you know, range. But if we stretch, you know, this histogram, you know, from zero to you know maximum values like that, then we can have you know better contrast. Okay. So, yeah, you adjust the color bar when you read the image. So, using the color bar, you know that the, you stretch the you know, histograms, you know, like that. Okay, to make you know. This kind of image to be better with the image with the better contrast. Okay. So, so this slide you know summarized such you know computer enhanced techniques, simple techniques. I mean that uh, to obtain you know better contrast, we can subtract in you know, a background, while we can use some. So contrast enhance the algorithms that I actually I have already mentioned, and background noise and contrast wandering artifact are also helpful. Okay. Then the, uh, the next one, uh, the last one that I will do like tell you is the noise. So so what kind what types of image noise exist in the nuclear medicine images? So Mainly, you know, that uh, there is, you know, the random noise. Well, we can say this is, you know, quantum motor. So that is, you know, statistical variation in counting level. And to reduce, you know, this statistical variation, actually, you know, that we should acquire more data, more count. Okay. More count. If we acquire more count, we can reduce, you know, statistical variation. And you know, we can also say these are the you know some structural laws. For example, you know that the so radionuclide distribution in the planar images. 
something like you know lips imposed over heart you know looks like you know some myocardial infarction and the uh, bowel, bowel activity in gallium six to seven scan looks like some inflammation so these are the some you know some regarded as some stru structural laws that prevent in a good interpretation okay and some imaging system artifact like you know non-uniformity and ring artifact and trig artifact also you know can be also regarded as some structural noise or some you know systematic noise that make us difficult to you know, the image interpretation uh, Yeah, because you know that the, because our system follows the the Poisson statistic, I mean that the, the collecting the count using the imaging systems in a follow the in a Poisson statistic, and the, you know that the the Poisson if the you know the mean of you know Poisson statistics is n zero, and then you know the standard deviation equal to in a root and okay. so actually you know, as I told you, you know that the, our image nuclear medicine is system follow you know, this is and actually, you know, the, if the mean of you know the signal is in you know, n zero, and each standard deviation is in you know, root n zero, actually this let me say. N zero here is number of cuts. So, as you can see here, the signal to noise ratio of the you know, nuclear imaging systems equals to the root n zero. So, if you have more count, you're gonna have a better signal. I mean that uh, if you have 100 count, even at the most ratio of 10, if you have 10,000 count, then the signal to noise ratio will be 100. So this is why we should have more. Then how can we pay more count? You can inject more, but you can scan no more. The patient's yeah, this is too difficult. Yeah, so, you know, yeah, we have, you know, learned about the special resolution and contrast and noise. Visual resolution, contrast. So, any question?
Any questions from you, member? <laughs> Ali Ali? Okay. <laughs> oh, you have a Korean. <laughs> okay, so let's finish. Thank you.